What's up guys, it's Alex here, back for another video, and in this video I'm going to revisit a series that I started a few months ago, like three or four months ago, on hero chaining and using side heroes. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to actually just take one example of chaining and using side heroes and it's going to be an example that uh, is actually was actually on stream and it happened in a real game against uh, you know another um, actual human opponent. Uh, <clears throat> And what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to load uh, that game and kind of uh, replay it the same way that I played it on stream and talk you guys through kind of the thought process uh, of, you know, what I was thinking about and what I needed to do to be able to uh, chain what I needed to chain properly. Because the thing is, you know, what I wanted to kind of say before I get into this video, uh, hero chaining, you know, as I've mentioned it in uh, the first video that I made on hero chaining, it is something that is certainly challenging to do. It's not something that's easy. And it really is something that separates like the really good players from kind of the somewhat decent players. Uh, you know, if you can chain properly and use side heroes properly, you will be better than probably like 95% uh, of the people that play this game because not that many people uh, can do this well. Uh, but on the flip side, it's because it's not easy, you know, if it was easy, everybody would be good at it. So it certainly takes practice and it certainly, you know, takes doing a lot of things right. You see, uh, to be able to chain properly, it's not really such a set thing where it's like, okay, do A, B, and C, and, you know, then there's your chains, right? Because there's there are going to be so many different situations, you know, all situations and all games are going to be different. So the thing is, it really is a thought process that you need to learn. And that's what I'm going to try to demonstrate in this video is I'm going to try to kind of, you know, pass on that thought process so that you guys can understand how to think about it so that when you get in your own situation that's going to be unique you know it's not going to be exactly like what i show you guys uh but you will be able to kind of use that same thought process to also change successfully and um the first thing you know i'll mention two things that need to be done uh right and well in order to actually be able to chain properly and chain successfully so number one thing is prioritization and you know when you're playing jebus cross um a lot of your thinking and a lot of your planning is going to be about prioritization, right? Because you're not going to be able to farm everything that's in your biome. You're going to want to identify the highest priority objects and figure out a plan on how you're going to farm them in the most efficient way, right? And the thing is, you know, this is already somewhat challenging in itself because the prioritization is going to be different depending on what town you're playing, depending on what hero you decide to main, depending on what uh, break you're dealing with, and depending on what the map gives you in terms of uh, creature banks and things like that. So, you know, as a quick example, like let's say, you're dealing with Arch Devils as your break. That's a really challenging break. But then you get Alamar uh, with Earth Magic as your hero. So then you're thinking of maining Alamar and you know using his Resurrect uh, to basically deal with that break. So then you're thinking, you know, in terms of your prioritization, you need to get him uh, knowledge, experience, and spell power, and you want to get enough army, uh, like let's say some angels or wyvern or something like that, to or, or maybe even giants to actually be able to deal with that break with his resurrect right so and then let's say you're dealing with something like uh you know and uh something like cyclops uh doing wolf raider pickets would not be that high of a priority because the arch devils will outspeed you anyway and the cyclops are not going to be able to actually shoot so they'll be dealing damage with penalty and then the arch devils have that no retaliation ability that's really nasty so you know that's not necessarily going to be the highest priority unless you have like a good hero with tactics and something that you can use to shield the uh, cyclops so 
Again, you know, depending on that, that could be, you know, it could change your priorities, right? Uh, and let's say on the, uh, another example, let's say you face something like a Freed Sultan's break, uh, then, you know, Cyclops would probably be the best bet of actually dealing with them, especially, you know, if you have a hero with tactics that so you can cover the Cyclops, or if you can slow down, you know, if you have like a Firebird and you can cast Mass Slow on the Ifrit Sultans and you can shoot them down with the Cyclops, because the Cyclops are not going to be getting uh, that Fire Shield damage that the Ifrit Sultans have, whereas, you know, if you have an Angel Power Stack or Wyvern Power Stack, uh, they're going to be d uh, getting uh, damage from the fire shield, regardless of whether or not, you know, you one-shot them or you deal, uh, you know, you take away retaliations or something like that. So you will be losing something if you fight them with melee. So then Cyclops would be a higher priority. And then let's say you find a golden bow or a sharpshooter's bow. That's going to make your Cyclops stack even that much stronger. So that's going to be a priority as well. So again... As you're prioritizing, you need to take all of those things into account. So that's the first thing you need to get good at is prioritization. I do have a video on uh, objective prioritization. I will have that in uh, the video description below. So check that out. And definitely, you know, before you get good at hero chaining, you need to get good at prioritizing. And the other thing that you want to get good at is planning right? You want to plan ahead. You want to really be able for proper chaining. You want to be planning not even one turn ahead, but like two or three turns ahead. And, you know, this is because some chains, some more complex chaining, if you're using many heroes, it will require more than one day to set up for it. So you need to know what you're doing, and kind of when you're doing it so that you, you know, you don't have to actually plan like a three turn ahead exactly. Like, you know, nobody's going to know exactly what they're doing in three turns, but you need to have a general idea. So as you're moving across the map, as you're scouting, as you're prioritizing, you need to kind of put together kind of a, almost a mind map in your, in your head of, uh, you know, doing things in the most efficient way possible. So that's usually going to revolve around your main hero. You need to figure out what you're doing with your main hero. And that's usually going to be the more difficult fights. Uh, and, you know, so your main hero does certain fights and the army moves with your main hero usually. And then you need to figure out what you can chain and how you can chain in the most efficient way possible as that army moves across. So, I'm actually going to demonstrate this in this example. It'll become more clear, uh, you know, so if it's, if it's a little bit confusing right now, don't worry, I will show you guys, uh, you know, in, in the actual example, so it'll be much more clear. But basically what I'm trying to get at is you don't want to, let's say, chain for something on the right side of the map, then go to the left side of the map, chain for something there, then go back to the right side and chain for something there, then go back to the left side. So you don't want to do that. What you want to do is... You want to chain for everything, like let's say you're on the right side, you're chaining for everything you can in that side of the map now as your army is there. And then when you mar when your army moves away, when you move your main hero back to like the center or something like that, you don't really want to go back to the, the right side. So basically, you want to figure out the most efficient way to chain, you know, what, what you can chain first, second, third, fourth, and how you can move your army across your biome and across the map to be able to farm as much as possible with side heroes as efficiently as possible. Again, it will be demonstrated in this example. <clears throat> so don't be too concerned if it sounds a little bit confusing right now. All right, um, so let's just get into this video right now, and I will show you guys what I'm talking about. So basically, I'm going to show you guys the entire week one. This is going to be like the main chain that I'm going to be demonstrating to you guys is going to happen on one to one actually. But what again, what I want to get across here is that thought process uh, that, you know, the fact that I'm already thinking about a lot of this, a lot of the elements to get the chains uh, set up are already you know, present in my mind, even as early as turn one and two. So that's kind of what I'm trying to get across here. So this is the end of turn one. This is the end of my turn one, right? 
And this is what we have scouted so far. So we have a cons here, right, which is great. You know, we're playing conflux, so cons are great. And we, I don't remember if we already sacrificed a hero here or not, but uh, we did sacrifice a hero at later, uh, you know, if we hadn't done that already. And we know that this is a size two cons actually. So we know that we can take that sometime soon. So that's what's in the back of my mind already for Luna, right? I need to get her experience. I need to get her uh, as much spell power and, um, you know, uh, level fire magic so that she can take a size two cons, right? So... Immediately, I'm sending Luna out for some treasure chests. I believe I already took this star axis here. We also see the Colosseum of Magi, the School of Magic star axis over here, where we can get Luna additional spell power. We also see this uh, Dragonwing Talbert, uh, Tabard, uh, which is also, you know, plus two to spell power. So that's also in the back of my mind of, you know, I'll need to take that eventually. Then we also see two pickets. So that's also, you know, a bit of a priority, not necessarily as high of a priority, but it's going to be in the back of my mind too. And we see this Pandora box, that's also going to be a priority for Luna, because, you know, I'm thinking that that's hopefully experience, maybe it's even spells. So that's also a priority. And then we also have a hive here. And um, yeah, and I think that's it. So and the hive is also going to be a priority. So already, the priorities are starting to kind of line up in my mind a little bit. You know, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do first. You know, obviously, I'm going to be playing off of this cons, and then, you know, we'll see what happens after that. But I'm identifying the objectives of interest already, right? And, you know, obviously, like I said, the cons is a priority, the spell power objects are a priority, the Pandora box is a priority, artifacts for spell power are a priority. Those are the highest, right? Uh, pickets and um, the hive are a little bit lower on the list for sure, but they could be higher. They could potentially be higher. Like if we didn't have a cons, then maybe I would go for pickets first because they don't actually take a whole lot of spell power. And then with that, we can do some other fights and things like that. All right, so now we're just going to be scouting more, identifying more objects of priority and starting to put together our kind of plan of, uh, you know, what we're going to do and when. All right, so here we see another XP shop and we see another hive. The XP shop is not going to be that high of a priority, uh, but the hive is because we, you know, it's going to be even higher of a priority than it was before because now we see two hives and uh, we also see a rib cage here, which is also going to help us. Now we see that we have a Devil's Break, which is not great. Uh, for Luna, it's not a great break. So this is already gonna affect our planning and our thinking. Uh, you know, if it was something like Unicorns or Nagas or Black Knights, those would be easily burnable and uh, we could break really early. Here, we're thinking that uh, we're gonna need army, we're gonna need maybe good magic. Uh, you know, we already need to start thinking about how the hell we're gonna deal with that. So now I think our army objects become higher priority because we are not really going to be able to deal with that without army. And uh, we might even think about trying to main uh, a might hero, like even maybe Locus, like with tactics, right? So that uh, maybe he can deal with that. All right. And here we continue to scout. So here we actually see a couple of treasure chests. So actually, you know, I was sending Luna over here to pick up this chest for experience because we didn't really see anywhere else to get her experience, which we really need. But here we actually have a hermit shack and two treasure chests. So I'm actually thinking about potentially now poor manning Luna and sending her out here instead. Pick that up, get experience here, maybe even do the churchyard and then poor man and go for the uh, spell power over here. And, uh, and then go for that cons, that's a size two that we already checked on turn one. So, but before we do that, we're gonna scout a little bit more here to make sure that uh, there's nothing here that I would need Luna for. And we don't really see anything. We see a red tower, but we're not gonna do that anytime soon, if ever. 
So now we uh, do decide to actually change our plans and instead of going here and going for this box, because uh, this is 1019 Monarch, so it would be slightly difficult to burn and we, we might not even get advanced fire magic from this one chest. And here there's much more chances to actually get advanced and maybe even expert fire magic. So that's what we do here. We're going to grab the army as well so that we can actually fight the familiars without uh, having to use any mana. And we did get advanced fire magic here, which is great. And here we're going to figure out if we have a poor man somewhere after if we do decide to do the churchyard and then maybe poor man somewhere. Like we can poor man in the black tower potentially. And of course, we're going to get more heroes to scout. Uh, here we're going to move down to figure out how uh, to get to this. So we're just going to scout that. And we do see a way, like a path through here. So now we kind of know uh, how to chain for this and that. So that's going to be, you know, a part of our thought process is how and when to chain for that. Cassie is going to go over here to help uh, to help Luna when, you know, Luna poor man's back. Cassie is going to chain the army back. And we'll get one more hero to go here. Okay, and basically, guys, so here we are already starting to put together our plan. So essentially, I'm already, I already know more. I know more about the map. And of course, as we find out more about the map, our plans, it, it is going to change our plans a little bit. But we're already starting to plan our, you know, game ahead. And here's what I'm thinking. So we already have advanced fire magic. We know that this is a size 2 cons. We know we're going to need to play off of that. So with Expert Fire Magic, I think we're going to need... Um, let's see. How much damage do we do right now? So 120. Uh, with Expert Fire Magic, that's going to add 60. So that's 180. So we need 4 more Spell Power, right? Uh, or... Three more, three more, no, four more spell power. So four more spell, well, actually even with three more, we could do it on air elementals. But let's say we need four more spell power, right? Hopefully we're going to get one more uh, spell power by leveling. And then we have, well, we actually have four spell power over here, right? So here's what I'm thinking. Here's what Luna is going to do. She's going to kill the familiars. She's going to grab these two treasure chests. Uh, she's potentially going to do the churchyard. After doing the churchyard, she's going to pour them out in the black tower then she's going to go for spell power over here in the School of Magic and the Colosseum of Magi. Then she's going to do the cons. After the cons, she's going to go for the box. So, and that's already kind of the plan that we have for the next few turns. So this is going to be like turn three, we take this. Turn four, we do the churchyard and we pour man. Turn five, we get more spell power. Turn six, we do the cons. Uh, turn seven, we get the box, right? So that's roughly the, the plan that we have right now. It's not, you know, it's not great. It's kind of slow. And it's certainly, you know, it, uh, things made, uh, were made more difficult by having to deal with devils. But it is a feasible game plan, right? And it, it makes sense. It makes sense to level up Luna, uh, go for spell power here to be able to do the cons, and then go for the box. And hopefully, maybe we'll get some good magic in the box that will allow us to deal with the devils. Uh, you know, or maybe we'll get a lot of experience uh, to level up Luna. So, you know... This, this plan seems pretty solid. And then as we're doing that, we're going to think about how we can chain for this, how we can do the picket, how we can do this picket, how we can start doing the hives. But that's a secondary priority. What I mentioned right now, leveling Luna, getting these chests, uh, you know, doing the churchyard even, getting spell power and going for the cons and going for the box, those are like the highest priorities. That's what we need to make sure that we do. Everything else is secondary to that. 
So you guys see, this is already turn two, and I'm already planning all of this out. And this is what I was trying to get across is, this is what you need to do to make sure that when you chain, and you know, this already is gonna affect the chains that I build in like three, four, even five turns, because this is the priorities that we're gonna base everything else around. The Luna, you know, the movements that Luna is gonna do, how we're gonna chain the army with her, what she's gonna do, and everything else happens around that. So that's part of the thought process, the chaining thought process that I really am trying to get across here is that you need to figure that out. You need to figure out the priorities. You need to kind of have that rough plan. Like, it can certainly change. We may do things a little bit differently, but this plan that we already have, it already provides structure to our game, you know, to, to like the chaos of that is our biome and, you know, trying to structure that as much as possible. And now it's going to allow us to chain much more efficiently and much more properly because we're going to already have this structure that we can base our chains around. Okay, so we're gonna continue to scout and uh, we also need to check whether there is an upgraded stack or not here because if there is not an upgraded stack, we could potentially, with a high enough spell power, we can potentially burn them. And even with an upgraded stack, we can still potentially burn them, but it's definitely gonna change our strategy. It's definitely important information to have. So let's figure that out. And obviously we're gonna collect gold as well. Here we actually see a Haspid side break, which actually looks more attractive than devils. Free town, great. Okay, and uh, yeah, like I said, we are gonna do this fight with Luna, uh, get our experience here and here, and uh, do the churchyard. Expert Wisdom, that's good, um, because if that box is spells, that means now we're going to be able to learn them. Okay, and uh, here we're going to be doing the churchyard. This is the patented churchyard tech. In case you guys don't know it, I have a video on that. I'll leave that in the description as well. Okay, and here we have expert fire, so that's good. Actually, we have a couple of treasure chests here, so I'm actually going to get Cassie experience because at this point I'm actually kind of thinking of potentially maining her to do that break because as a warrior and with tactics, she's going to be a bit of a better candidate to do that than Luna. And we also see a good shield here that we might chain for at some point, especially if we're going to be doing the break on army. We see another hive, by the way, which is good. 
We got gold dragons here, so I'm actually thinking, you know, that, that looks like it's the closest poor man, so Luna is going to be poor manning in the black tower and going for the spell power objects and then going for the cons, and I'll probably do the black tower with Cassie afterwards. Okay, and uh, Lord Hart is going to do a little bit of scouting here to figure out exactly how to get to this. Okay, so now we see exactly how to get to this tabard. And, uh, and we actually see another hive as well. So now we have a total of four hives. So that made them a higher priori priority for sure. Like if I only saw one hive, I may have not even done it. But now that we see four, that's kind of our power stack, and that's probably how we're going to deal with the devils. So, again, as you, like, learn new information, and especially here, there's three things that we can chain for. So we're definitely going to be thinking about chaining for this stuff at some point. And we also found another uh, picket over here, so... That's now we have three pickets as well. So that's also going to be something that we're going to be thinking about farming. All right. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to. Oh, shit. We actually forgot to buy Mage Gold the previous turn. Oops. That was a bit of a mistake, um, but that's okay. And let's get a tavern here so we can actually see his stats. Yeah, I believe uh, in my game I actually bought Mage Guild on turn 2. Here I just forgot to do it uh, before I ended the turn. But um, it's okay. I don't think it's really going to affect our gameplay that much. Because next turn we really just need to buy Magic University so we can get Earth Magic for Luna. Um, you know, and we can still do that next turn. So we're okay here. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep scouting here. And we see a cons over here that is a size 2 plus. So we're actually thinking of taking the side town and poor manning Luna here to take this cons eventually as well. All right, Locus is going to check. So we do see an upgraded stack, which is not great. And we do see uh, the size. So there's 20 of them with an upgraded stack. Not great. But at least now we have that information. <clears throat> Okay, here we're just bringing an additional army to Cassie. Uh, so that we can actually do uh, the Black Tower after Luna Pormans. We buy Luna back here, and uh, here we do, I believe, check the size of the cons. Yeah, so we do know that this is a size 2, which is great, uh, because here Luna now uh, just needs the 3 additional spell power, and then she can do the cons. So we send Luna out here to get spell power, spell power, and then do the cons. Now in the meantime, like I said, Cassie is doing this.
Oh, we got boots of speed here. That's cool. And then, uh, so after that cons, we will have two angels. We're kind of thinking about poor man in Luna here and taking that, even though our firewall is may, may not necessarily do enough damage if that's a size three or four, uh, with the two angels, we should be able to take it. So that's what we're thinking now is poor manning over here uh, after we do that cons. And then with that, we would have at least four angels. And with that, we can really chain everything else like the hives, the pickets. Uh, we can do that on side heroes, no problem. Okay, so Cassie is going to take that town. Here we just continue to pick up some resources and scouts. Okay, don't really see much else here. Aina is going to hang out over here because I might actually pour him on Luna. I'm not quite sure what's going to be. Like after I do the spell power here, I might just pour him on her on the dwarves uh, so that I can take the cons quicker. Oh, and one thing that I'm forgetting is I need to buy Earth Magic for Luna. Okay, now we move her out here. And Lord Heart scouts a bit more here. Okay, we can't really get through here. Okay, so uh, here we're just going to check the size of this cons. <clears throat> and this is also a size 2. So uh, now we're thinking that after we do that cons and after we do the box, we're probably going to do this cons with Luna because that's going to help us with chaining of basically everything else. So we are going to take this town. And we are going to buy another hero here to chain the army back. And uh, one piece of advice that I'll give you guys right now is, so when you're doing this, like this is already some basic chaining going on here, but basically what I want you guys to kind of um, pay attention to is when you're doing this, when you're just kind of delivering the army back and forth, keep your heroes that you did that with in the area that they are in now so that they're set up for chains for later. Because for example, here we're just delivering the army to Luna so that she can actually, uh, you know, fight the nymphs without having to use any mana. But later on, like I said, we're going to need to deliver the army here so that Luna can take this cons and then we can start taking these hives. So that these guys like this, they're already set up in chains, right? So, <clears throat> um, you know, if you ever move them to pick up resources or something like that, still try to keep them in this general area. And another tip that I'll give you guys is don't move your side heroes too quickly. You know, one problem that I had... Um, when I was trying to set up my chains um, is I would usually move my side heroes like these heroes or something like that to pick up resources, right? I would usually do that at the beginning of the turn. Now, the problem with that, when sometimes I got to a point where I realized I needed an extra hero to complete my chain, and I actually had a hero in the area, but I already moved him. Uh, I already moved the hero to pick up resources. And uh, I was like, well, shit, you know, I shouldn't have done that because I could have used that hero to complete the chain. And now I couldn't. So, you know, this is just kind of like a basic tip. You know, when you're not sure or when you don't you know, know exactly what you need to complete a chain or when you're first starting to chain, make sure that you have maybe even extra heroes in the area and make sure that, you know, you kind of consider everything before moving your side heroes. Make sure you know for sure that you are not going to need them for a chain, you know. Uh, before you actually move them to like pick up resources or you know move them out of the way or something like that.
to see like these guys that I've all moved, uh, you know, I could have technically needed them. I mean, Gretchen is obviously kind of far over here, so we're not going to be chaining with him. Uh, but, you know, technically, if I realized that I needed uh, Gretchen, then I could have moved him back out over here. Right? All right, so now we need one more hero here. And actually, we're also going to upgrade some pixies. This way, we'll be able to... Uh, speed up some of our heroes. Right, just leave a few over here like that, I guess. Let's upgrade a few more. Okay, that should work out. Hero. Ah. Okay. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to pour them on Luna. That's going to give her more movement uh, than, you know, having to go back here like this. It's also always really good to uh, have your heroes as fast as possible. So on the fastest unit that you possibly can have, that means that they're, they're gonna get more movement, um, which is gonna help you complete your chains better. Let's give Aiden some additional movement too. All right, that should work. Okay, so now our ch is when our chaining is going to start to kind of come together, right? So first we're doing this const, then we're doing this box, and we're going to pour man Luna over here, take this const, and then after that, as we're chaining the army this way, we're going to take this hive, that hive, and then um, chain for this stuff, and then basically move Luna out to break. Now let's have Aina over here. Alright, and here we're just going to make sure that we conserve our mana. Uh, so we're actually only going to use two firewalls on uh, doing this cons. I also have a guide for this, so you guys, uh, I'll leave that in the video description below as well. Okay, Expert Earth, great. And now we're going to do this. Hmm. 
actually didn't even need to use magic. That's good. 10k gold is not what we needed, but oh well. And we're going to replenish Luna's mana here, so we're going to buy the Mage Guild. Alright, and we are going to deliver our army back so that we can have Luna sped up on an Angel. And we're going to need our army down, down there anyway. So you guys see, we're, like I said, we're already doing quite a bit of this chain, but this is pretty easy. The you know, uh, thanks to the fact that we have set up all of these heroes already, and we keep the, them in this area, so now it's just easy to use them again to kind of chain back like this. All right, and here now is when our chaining is going to start to come together here. So. Now is when we're going to need to start thinking about this, really. So again, we've identified the objects of priority uh, before, right? And um, the fact that we were playing around the cons, and now we're doing this cons with Luna, that's going to, you know, uh, it, it was important to prioritize that because with four angels, we can basically farm everything. You know, we can take any size hive, we can take any size picket, and we can do that on side here. So we're not going to need Luna for that. So. This is what I meant when I said, uh, you know, when I talked about prioritization in the beginning, it's important to do this. It's important to understand what's going to allow you to kind of snowball the fastest and what's going to allow. Because like if I went for like pickets or hives first or something like that, it may not have been as useful uh, in terms of being able to do fights on side heroes and things like that. So I knew that I needed Luna for this. I knew that I needed Luna for this. And after that, we're just chaining everything else, right? So now what, what, what else do we need to chain for, right? So obviously we take the cons. We want to chain for the hive. So this hive and that hive. Maybe also chain for the shield later. Uh, this picket and this hive and this tabard here. We'll probably also ch uh, check the scroll here. Maybe even the scroll here. And then this picket and this hive, right? So those are all the things we want to chain for and one more picket potentially. But this one is a little bit out of the way. So we may actually not get to chain for that. Now, a couple of more things that I want to mention is one, when you're making your chains, especially when you're when you first start to learn hero chaining, don't make your chains too ambitious. Because the thing is, you really don't want to have your army stuck. Like, you don't want to have your main, which has happened to me before. You know, I had my main, like, over here ready to break. And then my army was stuck over here. And I had no way to chain it back. So I ended up basically wasting an entire turn with my main hero. And another thing that kind of goes in line with that is try to understand if your chain is not working out like when you're in the middle of your chain and you're already doing it and then you're like trying to chain for something but then you're like dude I'm not going to have the moves to do that and bring the army back recognize that you know try to recognize that before it actually happens and before you actually get to the point where it's you know you, you end up getting the army stuck and uh you know then don't chain for that thing that uh you know gets uh gets your army stuck basically so just make sure, you know, kind of try to recognize if your chains ever start to break. Okay, so now is when the planning is actually going to start to come together here. So we're going to take the cons with Luna, right? Then somebody else, like Craig Hack, for example, grabs the army from Luna. 
then we need to give the army to Cassie. And Luna, oh, okay, Luna is actually going to pour him out in the churchyard, right? So I think um, right, I think we're going to get rid of Gretchen here. So, after we pour him on Luna, you know, we're basically going to buy her back here and kind of move her out for the break, right? But as we do that, now is when we're going to start to chain for everything else with side heroes, right? So, what we're going to do here is as our army so and this is going to be like the most efficient way to do this so as we have our army here and we move the army back this way we can chain for these two hives and we already have heroes set up for that right so we can use cassie to take this hive and we can use uh tazar to take that one so <clears throat> if we set up cassie Let's see if Tazar gets the army from here. And he can, okay, he can actually deliver it here. So then we can have Cassie set up over here. Here, and grab this artifact too, by the way. Okay, perfect. And Cassie can do that. Give the army to Tazar. And he does that. Then gives the army here. And here, we actually start to chain for this stuff. So maybe I can actually bring Aiden a little bit closer here and Aina as well, potentially. Okay, and Tazar, I think, well, actually, we can put him closer to here even. Yep, like this. Yep, something like that. Okay, let's go. Oh, wait, um, we do want to speed up Luna, though. Um, okay, I think I'm going to... Oh, wait, Gretchen. Yeah, okay, I'll get rid of Gretchen. This way, um, I want to have Luna sped up as well. Okay, let's go. Okay, so now is when our chaining is really going to start to come together. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, Craig Hack goes that way. Okay, Luna takes the cons. Well, let's go. Same tech as we did it before. There's two firewalls. Not the greatest skill, but oh well. Alright, so now we're going to pour Mount Luna in the churchyard. Could actually have Craig Hack take the actual churchyard, but we might not even do that. Uh, because it's more important to complete the chains now. Keep the boots. Okay, we'll buy Luna back later. <clears throat> So, and essentially within these two turns, we're going to be chaining for these two hives, this hive, this picket, this object here, the two scrolls, the shield here, uh, this picket, this hive, and we're going to break. We're going to break on one, two, one. So it's quite a bit, right? And um, again, the point that I'm trying to get across here 
is, yeah, we're doing all of that in one turn, but the setup really started happening even on turn one and two when I started identifying these objects and when I started, you know, prioritizing the consas and spell power and the box and things like that. So essentially, you know, this is what I'm trying to get across here is that thought process, that thought process that you need to have in order to be able to chain successfully like this. bring another hero here now. Okay, perfect. Okay, so here we're not actually gonna be able to chain for the shield now, but we'll chain for that later, because that shield is a plus seven defense that's really gonna help um, against the devil since we're fighting them on army. So we're gonna set up Tazar for that, and uh, Cassie. We'll see, maybe we'll move her this way or that way, not quite sure yet. Okay, so now, now we're going to start chaining for this stuff over here. Now, and you see the other thing, like I was saying, so this is what I meant by being efficient right? So our army is moving across this way, right? And we're trying to chain for everything we can as the army is moving along, you know, it would have not made sense to like chain for something here, then let's say bring the army all the way here, chain for this picket, then go and chain for this stuff, then go and start to chain for these hives, right? So this is what I meant by trying to do this efficiently, is as our army is moving across, we're chaining for everything. Like we, The only thing we didn't chain for is the shield. We will chain for that later, but everything else we already chained for. So now we're going to chain for this stuff here. Eleven wider name. Didn't attack. It's weird. Interesting. <laughs> okay. All right. And, uh, pick it. I'm not going to lose an angel. What are you talking about? Okay. 
All right, uh, and uh, we're going to set up Lord Heart to chain for that. So let's see. Aiden is going to do the picket. He's going to do, let's see, the, let's say the Black Tower, Thunderbirds, and he's going to do the Hive. Then Lord Heart grabs the army. So we'll set that up in a minute. I'm not going to have Luna sped up on an angel. So Luna is going to get ready to break. So I'll, I just move her out over here. Okay. All right, and now is when, so another tip is for when you are actually going to chain, and especially when you do complex chains, um, make sure that you kind of think through them the turn before, um, so that if you need to place another hero somewhere, you can do that, uh, so that if something is not working out, uh, you know, you can kind of see that ahead of time, and, you know, maybe not chain for something that is a little bit too ambitious. So here, for example, you know, this picket, I don't think I'll be able to chain for it. Because um, it's more important to chain for this stuff and also the shield. And also I'm going to try to get the scrolls because they could be really helpful. So basically uh, what we're going to do, so we have our army here. We're going to get this hive. Uh, or, I mean, first we're going to get the, the block, uh, well, we're going to get the picket, then we're going to get the black tower, then we're going to uh, kill the thunderbirds to get this, then we're going to take the hive. Then Lord Heart brings the army this way. Okay, so I'm going to want to bring the army here uh, to open this prison so that I can have another hero pick up the scroll here, give the army here to Tazar so that Tazar can take the shield, give the army back to Cassie so that Cassie can chain it back to somebody over here, and then through Aina, uh, we give it back to Luna, and actually we get another hero to farm the picket, and I think Luna is going to be farming this hive. And see, if I wanted to farm the picket, I would need like an extra two heroes here. And I think that's just a little bit too ambitious for what we're going to be able to do right now. So we are going to skip that picket. All right. But I do think I need another hero for Lord Heart over here. Let's pick up this scroll. And, yep, we can have Aina here, like this. So she can open the prison, and then we can complete this chain. So once again, and, you know, one more piece of advice, you know, uh, again, I think I've mentioned this before. You got to, you know, kind of build the chain in your mind before you can actually, you know, chain properly in a game like this. So kind of especially when you're first doing it, talk yourself through the chain, just like I just did, uh, at least a turn before, like right, you know, as you're setting up. So now that we're setting up for the chain for the next turn, you need to know exactly how it's going to happen. So, you know, here is our army. We take the picket, we take this, we take that, we take that. We have Lord Hard bring the army back. Uh, we have Aina open the prison. The prison hero takes this scroll. Then gives the army here to Cassie. Um, Cassie gives it to Tazar. Tazar takes that, gives it back to Cassie. Cassie gives it here to Zilar. And then Zilar brings it uh, here. We get another hero like Vey to take this picket. Then we give the army back to Luna. And then Luna takes this hive and then she breaks. So that's a lot of stuff to do in one turn, right? And you need to be able to do this. You need to be able to kind of talk yourself through that a turn before. But once again, an important part of this, a very important part, is the fact that we were able to prioritize and the fact that we thought ahead. Because here, we already had Lord Hart in this position, right, in this vicinity. So if we bought another hero only now to set somebody up to do this chain, we it would not have worked out. Uh, Lord Hart, you know, or any hero like Aina, for example, she would have only been like somewhere over here, which would not have been enough to chain for all of this. So again... You know, start planning for those chains a few turns ahead. Like, you need to have a general idea for, you know, when you're going to be chaining for what. Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. We have haste. I actually don't have anything. All right. Ooh, fuck. Lost the wyvern. That should not have happened. Okay, that was a mistake. I was trying to do better. I did worse. Tried to do better than auto combat. Actually did worse. All right, and here actually you see, um, this is what I was talking about. So the chain is kind of breaking a little bit. So I thought that I was gonna have enough movement uh, with Aiden to actually give the army back to Lord Hart uh, so that Lord Hart could actually give it to Aina here because this is all of his movement. Now we actually have to back up over here a little bit with Lord Hart. So this may actually affect our chain a little bit, but I do think that Aina still has enough movement to grab the army and open the prison. But this is the kind of stuff you want to pay attention to as you're actually chaining, because that could have actually affected the chaining that we could have done around here. And if it does, you need to recognize that and you need to actually make sure that you kind of... Um, adjust you adjust your chain and maybe you know in this case we would not have chained for this uh, scroll or something like that if it affected uh you know our chain this way all right Nina has spells right not really much but Ooh. uh we don't have good morale unfortunately End up losing Cyclopes here. Oh, that's annoying, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Alright, now we're gonna get rid of Aiden, I guess. Actually, probably Lord Heart. Aiden at least has Earth Magic. This way we can open this prison. Corcus is a good hero. Let's keep our Cyclops here so we don't lose any more. Oh, yeah, let's keep our Cyclops here, he says. Let's not lose an angel. Fire Elemental is actually a really good scroll to have here. Because uh, Luna does have Expert Fire. So she's going to summon a good amount of uh, Fire Elementals, which is really going to help with the break. Alright, um, uh huh. So here. Okay, we're uh, yeah we were thinking that we were going to use Zilar to deliver the army back, but this is fine. Uh, if we need to buy another hero, we will. Right now, we're just going to use him to give the army to Tazar, and then Tazar uh, gives it to Cassie over here. Okay, which is fine. I guess we'll have our Cyclops on us. We're not going to bring the Cove stuff. We're just going to keep that on uh, Zilar. But this shield is definitely pretty important to have, um, like I said, for the break. 
plus seven defense is really good. One morale. Okay. All right, uh, and now Cassie delivers the army here. Now we can uh, take that picket. a little bit. Actually, it doesn't matter if we lose any uh, our one stacks here because uh, four angels do any size picket anyway. Nah, it's a small picket, so it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, now we're gonna get one more hero. So we're gonna get rid of someone. I don't really wanna get rid of Tazar. Um, don't really wanna get rid of Zilar with this meat, I guess Ana. She does have some pixies, but, oh, could have gotten rid of Craig Hack, actually. Okay, so now we just need to grab the army. And... Let's grab these air elementals too, just in case. Soul mirror. Aha. Uh -huh. So we will need one more hero. Just get rid of Vey, I guess. So I don't want to use Luna's movement, even though it's only 200 moves, but I really want to conserve Luna's movement as much as possible because 1 2 1 is already a little bit of a late break and we're only going to have a thousand moves here and we still need to do this with Luna. So uh, we're going to get one more hero here. Okay, and now let's just think what we need for the breaks. So, I guess something like this, right? All right, that's acceptable. And that's also acceptable. Actually, 
kind of needed some one stocks here too. Uh, can I reach Luna with another hero? Should be able to. Let's get one more hero. I do think we want to have some one stocks. not quite reaching Luna here. I mean, do I want to dig for uh, 2,000 moves here? I'm not really. Well, here, um, I would probably not back up with Luna, actually. Like I said, I want to conserve the movement, so I guess what we would do is we would make some Cyclop one stocks. Um, it sucks. We would be sacrificing them, but it is what it is, I guess. And really, I'm just doing this for the sake of demonstration. Uh, you know, like this this break is certainly not going to be the easiest anyway. Uh, you know, we're, we're still definitely going to lose quite a bit of stuff doing it. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys how this can be done. So you see, in one turn, we were able to chain quite a lot of stuff. We took two hives, we took two pickets. Um, we pick up the scroll, we picked up the shield, we picked up uh, another scroll up in that prison. And, you know, in the turn before, we chained for an additional two hives and the cons here. So this is exactly what I was trying to get across is when you think, when you prioritize and when you plan ahead, you will be able to pull off these kinds of chains. But it takes all of that. It takes all of that thinking to actually be able to to pull off the chain on this turn. And it's not like, boom, you know, you have a chain in the next turn. It's not, it doesn't work like that. You need to prioritize, you need to plan ahead and you need to kind of start thinking about those chains and start setting up for them a few turns in advance even. All right, so. Hopefully we don't get too many minus morales and minus luck. Um, I'd probably summon fire elementals here. Okay, let's take retail. All right, minus luck on that guy's fine. Okay, no minus luck on wyvern, that's good. Ooh, really? Okay, now we're gonna slow is what we're gonna do, actually. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so we can wait with the Angel. I think we'll wait with the Wyvern too, and we'll put the Fire Elemental here. Okay. Okay, he went for the Wyvern. Also went for the wyvern. Um, did we not get a turn with our? Oops. What can we do here? Stone skin, I guess. I feel like we didn't get a turn with our fire elementals. Death with the angel. Cure. Yeah, I can cure the angel, I guess. Minus 
nice look. Alright, now let's uh, try to take this guy down. Okay, no more spells. So you see, we were able to do the break. Uh, it was pretty rough because Devils is a pretty rough break. I think we would have done better if we ended up maining uh, somebody like Cassie and we ended up actually, uh, you know, uh, doing a break on a warrior hero. But either way, uh, we were still able to do this. And really, it wasn't the demonstration here was not necessarily for the break. It was just to show you guys that I was able to do all of this in just one turn, right? And hey, we were able to do a tough break. And now we actually still have a little bit of army. And, you know, if we take a side, uh, a town in the center, then uh, we'll be able to replenish Luna's mana and we'll be able to get a lot done with 13 spell power, her firewall, the fire elemental scroll. So we're in a decent position here now but obviously you know the demonstration here wasn't to show you guys the break i could have probably done that fight cleaner but the main demonstration here was for the chaining so i do hope that um you guys find this useful i hope that i was able to kind of uh, accomplish what i set out to do and transfer that thought process that i wanted to kind of show to you guys and to you know, so that you guys can try to replicate this kind of thought process in your games and also successfully chain a lot of objects like this in just a couple of turns. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a long one, but there's not really a way to make this shorter because, um, again, you know, this is, uh, like I said, one of the more complex uh, skills that you will need to learn in this game. But if you can learn it, it's going to put you in really kind of the top few percent of players, and you're really just going to be better than a lot of people, and you'll be winning games left and right. So um, I will end the video here. Again, thank you for watching. If you guys do want to see more Heroes 3 content, check out my Twitch stream. I'll have the link in the de description below. And uh, you're welcome to subscribe to me on YouTube as well, as I do release new videos just about every week. So if you subscribe, you'll get notified when I come out with new videos. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.